Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be covering how to find unusual options activity using the Thinkorsim platform. Now the absolute easiest way to do this is through the Trade Flash gadget, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into that first, but after that, we're also gonna go through creating our own custom scan for unusual options activity. Now to add the Trade Flash gadget, all you have to do is come over here to your side panel. Now on my side panel, you're gonna see things like live news and then a couple watch lists down here below. But to add additional gadgets, all we have to do is hit this little plus sign in the lower left-hand corner. From there, the little gadget sum menu is gonna pop up and we're gonna search for the one called Trade Flash. Now, once we click on it, you're gonna see that this gadget shows a lot of information. Besides just showing unusual options activity, you're also gonna see things like recent analyst upgrades or downgrades, large block trades on individual stocks, and big news announcements like recent earnings. It can also be customized to remove those other pieces of info if you just wanna see unusual options activity, but I personally like to keep it. Now, right now on mine, you're only seeing unusual options activity. This is what it looks like. It says big delta trade. But if we were to scroll through this list uh, right here, we can see MOC, a $165 million buy order. If we keep going down, we can see BCYC briefly trades after halt. And it was halted again after a down 12% move. So it's showing us a lot of info here. But if we wanted to filter that out, we can come up here to the little sales tag. And we could uncheck all because we don't want to see all news announcement. We only want to see big delta trades, which is really just synonymous for unusual options activity. Now, if you notice here, this little search box, this little black box is empty at the moment. That means what we're looking at is combing through the entire stock market and futures market. If you wanted to narrow this down to just a specific stock, just throw the symbol in that search field right there. In our case, if I was to click in there and go ahead and type in AAPL for Apple, we can now see it's only showing me big delta trades for Apple today. And if I wanted to, I could also filter this down by specific watch list. To do that, all you have to do is come here to this little gear icon, and you can see all of the personal watch lists, the ones that I've made myself, as well as the public watch list, if we wanted to filter it by maybe like the S&P 500. So we're only seeing unusual options trades or big delta trades for companies that trade in the S&P 500. You can also see if I come back to personal, I've also got dynamic watch lists, which are basically just scans that I created in the past. And I could base this off of those dynamic scans basically just cross-referencing it against that scan. So not only is it looking for unusual options activity, it's only showing us unusual options activity on companies that are considered high volatility in this case, if I was to click on this. Now, right now, since I clicked on my own personal scanner for high IV stocks, uh, you see no results come up. And if we came up to my watch list up above, we could see that's because there's only one company and there must not have been any huge trade stay on ON. Now let's go ahead and remove that filter for just a second and go through what this is actually telling you. Now up at the top here, we can see somebody placed an order to buy 3,800 contracts of the HYG 19 November $85 puts and they spent 36 cents for them. Now at the exact same time, we can also see another order to buy 3,800 contracts of HYG, the same strike puts for 35 cents. So we can pretty much assume this was the same trade. It just filled at two different prices, half filled at 36 cents, half filled at 35 cents. Right below that, we could see that somebody also bought 14,000 contracts against XLI for 21 January, 2022, the 105 strike calls for $2.20 each. And at the exact same time as that, somebody also sold 9,000 of the XLI 17 December $100 calls for $4.08. Now, personally, me looking at that, seeing as they were at the exact same time, I would assume this was a diagonal. They sold 9,000 of the $100 calls, bought 14,000 of the 105 calls, and it looks like they just did a little unbalanced, more to the long side than on the short side. But if we personally found that trade interesting, what we could do is go ahead and right click on XLI here. We're gonna come down to send to, and we're gonna send it to red in this case. Cause if you see up here in the upper right next to where it says Intel at the moment, you're gonna see that my trade page is already linked to red. So if I go ahead and click on this, XLI is automatically gonna be sent there. And if I wanted to get a little bit more info about the options trades today, I could come down to today's option statistics down here. I could see that there was considerably more volume on the call side than on the put side. 35,000 calls traded today, whereas only 9,600 puts were traded today. And if I wanted to get even a closer look, I could open up options, time, and sales, and I could scroll down and see that this was the biggest trade today. The 14,105 calls that were uh, purchased, I believe, is what these ones were. Yep, if we look over here, these ones were the ones that were purchased. And because that other trade wasn't included in this, we can go ahead and sort by quantity here. And there are the 9,000 contracts that were sold against the $100 calls right there. So like I said, Trade Flash is a very easy way to find that unusual options activity. We could see trades against ExxonMobil, HYG, lots of trade against HYG today, EFA, Oxy, uh, the list goes on and on. And then obviously it's up to you to go from there and, and maybe dig into this a little bit more if you want to trade off of that. If, if hopefully these people know more than what we do, if, if they're trading such large quantities of these contracts, just keep in mind that we don't know the underlying positions for these people. 
In the case of Disney, you can see somebody sold 26,250 contracts on the 180 calls. They bought 26,250 of the 180 calls. But for the following month, for me personally, I would look at that and assume that this was a roll, that they were closing out of the ones that expire here in a week or so and then just rolling them out further in time. But who knows what this person's position is. They could be long on Disney stock or they could have a, a very large short stock position and they're using this as a hedge against the stock. Who knows? But I do think Trade Flash is amazing for finding unusual options activity and it's super easy to use. But if you guys want to create something for yourself, we're going to go ahead and hop over to the scan tab and whip something up. So let's go over to scan. We can see here I'm already on the option hacker and I already have the scan set up for what we're going to create. But I'm going to go ahead and reset this so we can go through it step by step. Now for the scan today, we're going to be looking for options that have, let's say, at least 2,500 contracts traded today. We're also going to say the volume is greater than the open interest, which really just tends to suggest that the trading volume is exceptionally high for today. And we're also going to throw in the call sizzle index and put sizzle index to hopefully look for options that are trading more than their five day average. And that should narrow down the list quite a bit. We shouldn't have that many results if we if we throw those in there. Now, right off the bat, let's go ahead and delete these two filters in here because we're going to start fresh. And we're going to start with options volume first. I said we want to look for options that have traded at least 2,500 contracts today. So we're going to come up here in the top right hand corner and add a filter. This one's going to be an options filter. We're going to come over here to where it says ask. And this is drop down menu. When you click on this, you're going to see a bunch of items come up that we could search for. Now, in our case, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for volume. Go ahead and click on that. And like I said before, we're going to make the minimum 2,500 contracts. Now, the next one we're looking for is volume to be greater than open interest, which really just means more contracts were traded today than were held overnight yesterday that were outstanding yesterday, which, like I said a second ago, tends to suggest that the volume is exceptionally high today, which is what we're looking for in this case. So we're going to come over here to add a filter. This one's going to be a study filter. We're going to come over here to the default that fills in here, ADX crossover. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom and go ahead and click on custom for me. When you click on custom, it's going to create a little pop-up window. I'll go ahead and move it down so you guys can actually see it. From here, we're going to go ahead and delete what automatically pops up here, ADX crossover. Since we don't want to use it, go ahead and delete it. We're going to come down to the bottom left-hand corner and go ahead and add a condition. From here, we're going to select a condition. In this case, it's going to be a price condition. I'm not sure why, but volume is in here. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down and find volume. Go ahead and click on that. We're then going to say is greater than, because again, we're looking for volume to be greater than open interest. We're going to select a condition. Once again, it's a price condition. We're going to scroll down. There's open interest. We'll go ahead and click on that. And we're going to say in the past day. So in the past one bar in this instance, and we'll go ahead and hit save. We're happy with what this says. Volume is greater than open interest. We'll go ahead and click okay here. And the next two we're going to add is the call sizzle index and put sizzle index. Now, if you're not familiar with sizzle, it basically just gives you a reference point saying, is the volume higher or lower than its five day average? So let's say, for example, a stock typically trades a million shares a day, and that's been its average over the past five days. And today it's on track to do two million shares in volume. In that case, its sizzle index would be 2.0, two times higher than its five day average. Now, since we're going to be looking for either the call or the put sizzle index to be higher than normal, we're going to have to add a new condition group here. If you see where I have my mouse right now, it's saying all of the following, which means all of these scan criteria will be have to be met. But in the case of a call or put sizzle index, it's either one of them. So I'm going to come up here to add a condition group. I'm going to say any of the following to add a new subsection right here. From there, I'm going to go ahead and add a filter here. For some reason, it's a stock filter. We're going to come over to the little drop down menu. And in this case, we'll do call sizzle index first. And we're going to put the minimum as two. So the volume today is twice as high as its five day average. We're then going to come over here and add another filter. It's going to be another stock filter. When we click on the drop down menu, we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we find put sizzle index and go ahead and click on it. And we're going to do the exact same thing for this one, a minimum of two. Now, something you don't necessarily have to do, but I personally want to narrow this down to only be stocks. I don't want maybe like futures contracts to show up here. So I'm going to come up here to the top where it says scan in, in this case, all optionable. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, go to category, and in this case, make it all stocks. And I want these options to have weekly expirations. So what we need to do is also intersect this with, we're going to come down to public R through W and go to the very bottom and click on weeklies. The very last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this where it says just show options contracts. I like to show stocks and options just so I have a nice little breakdown between symbols and contracts and then go ahead and hit scan. And we can see only 35 options contracts meet our criteria. So this list is pretty refined. There's not many results here. 
Now, right off the bat, we could see our very first result was Baidu. And in this case, it looks like it was the October 8th, 160 calls. So the options that expire uh, this upcoming week, if I take a look at a calendar, that'd be tomorrow. On this line, we can see the last traded price today was 61 cents. Those contracts moved up 53 cents today. They were up over 600%. And they traded 3,425 times today. Those 160 calls did. Now, if I want to take a closer look at that, let's go ahead and come to the trade page and let's pull up Baidu. And if I remember correctly, those were the 8 October 160 calls. And we can see right off the bat, the volume for the day was 3,425, which was greater than its open interest of 1,289 contracts. So we can tell right off the bat, the volume was pretty high on these contracts today. And if we wanted to take even a closer look, we could actually scroll down on Baidu. We can see today's option statistics. We can see a whole lot more calls were traded today than puts. So a lot more volume on the call side than the put side. Many of those of which were confirmed to be at the ask or above, so very likely purchased. And if we go down even further to options, time, and sales, we can see the biggest two trades for the day. Looks like 1,196 contracts traded of the 162 and a half calls and 300 contracts traded of the 120 puts. These should be the largest trades for the day, but if we scroll down a little bit further, you can see I've already sorted this by quantity. So these are the largest trades going down basically. So a lot of volume on the 165 calls for this upcoming week, 162 and a halfs, 172 and a halfs. And again, we don't know these people's underlying positions. This could just be bought as a hedge. Maybe these people are really short on Baidu and they're just buying these calls to hedge themselves for the rest of the week. Or maybe they're just speculating that Baidu will actually go up. Again, that's the downside with this. We don't know their underlying positions, but we could really use this to maybe make some, some trades off of this information. Now, just going back to the scan page again, just so you guys can see that if you want to make it for yourselves. Remember, we're looking for a volume to be greater than 2,500 contracts traded today. We set the volume to be greater than the open interest today. And we said the call sizzle index and put sizzle index needed to be at least two for that contract we were looking at. But that's pretty much it. I think that's all you guys really need to know to find some unusual options activity. Obviously, that's only half the battle, actually finding those contracts. Then you got to interpret it and make a trade off of it. But I hope this helped. If you guys do have any follow-up questions, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll answer them all as best I can. Also, if you guys have any video suggestions, please leave those down below in the comments as well. It could be anything about think or swim or really just anything trading related. I'd really love to hear some of your guys' suggestions. But we'll go ahead and end it there. Hit me up if you guys have any questions. Try and make some money this week, and I'll catch you all in the next video.